Okay, good evening, uh, everyone. Can you all hear me? And you can see the screen. Yes, sir. All right. All right. So uh, I'll start with the session, but just uh, uh, let me see one or two minutes more. And today's session is going to be very, very important. Don't miss out there. And I'm going to go for rapid fire. There's a rapid fire. A lot of new topics will be covered. And I'm going to cover all those rapid fire, all such topics there. And believe me, all these topics, uh, which I'm going to cover in this two hours in the rapid fire case, will really help you in the coming prelims exam. So I'm very, very happy to see you back. Particularly, I'm missing all my students from CKIS. <laughs> I love you all, right? all the CKIS students. So I'm really, uh, you know, so I want to get back to Trivandrum. Mujhe Kerala ki baut yaad a rahi hai. Right? So that's what, uh, my wife is saying that. You go back, go back to Kerala. Right? <laughs> so let me see. Um, day two. Let me see more people can join here. See, I will maintain my pace. I will be not very fast, not very slow. Because since uh, two hours time is there, at least uh, remember that whatever topics I will mention, right? Uh, see, uh, there's a value addition program. It's difficult to cover uh, all the topics there. But again, remember that whatever uh, topic I'm going to cover right now, that will be really very, very important. And whatever topics I will highlight, that you need to do it. Whatever material you have got, right? You have to do that. So let me see all set. Okay, very good, good evening, everyone. So prelims, sir, 2024 environment. Right, rapid fire program. Right, so we'll go through every aspect one by one. Right, so let us start. Without wasting much time, let's start with the topic. See, yesterday I have mentioned 30 important topics there. Now, what I'm going to do today, uh, I'm referring some of the unconventional sources to follow. See, the Hindu, Indian Express, down to earth, these are the sources which you need to follow there. But there are some kind of topics which I find uh, really very, very important for the exam. I'm going to cover that. So let us now go into that. See, in front of me, there's a screen is there. I can see your chat. I can see your response, right? And I will be from time to time interact with you, all of you. Now, if you take here, and I have prepared one content. See, don't worry that probable topics of the exam, you will be getting that. Need not to worry. For all those probable topics, uh, you will definitely get that, right? And again, we are trying to make a summarized notes, right, on those kind of topics there, like comprehensive notes on that. So you'll be getting that. Plus, whatever I'm covering right now, this document, again, will be given to all of you. So what do you have to do this two hours? Just focus. Just focus on whatever things I am trying to cover. And if you are right now, wherever you are, you are right now in the classroom or you are in your home or hostel, wherever. Be with pen and paper and write it down, jot it down. Whatever the points, key points I am going to highlight, please note it down. Plus the document will be shared to you after the session. Nothing to worry about it, right? So let's begin. Let's begin with the topic here. So what I'm now going to cover here, let's go to this one. Three new species of frogs have been formed. Arunachal Pradesh. See, northeastern India, Arunachal Pradesh. See, remember that north is said to be paradise, paradise of the earth. And if you look at flora and fauna, plants and animals, diversity, north is, is very rich. And Arunachal Pradesh sir, is making frequent news. So three type of amphibians or frogs have been found 
in Arunachal Pradesh. So now I'm coming here, this one. So first of all, let me give the name here. This is Nam Dhapa. Right? Nam Dhapa, this is a Nam Dhapa Kamlang landscape. Right? Let me first read this, then I'll bring a pointers there. Nam Dhapa National Park is a very important national park of India and it is known for tiger. You have a tigers. You also have a Nam Dhapa. Let me, let me write it down. If you talk about Nam Dhapa, so we'll be covering a lot of such a topic. The Nam Dhapa is a national park. And if you talk about Nam Dhapa in Arunachal Pradesh, where, which state? Arunachal Pradesh is known for what? One is a tiger. It is also tiger reserve of state of Arunachal Pradesh. Nam Dhapa is known for three type of leopards. One is very, very important, this one, clouded leopard, right? Then you find snow leopard. And you know that snow leopard is very important this year exam. I'll be covering some of the topics on snow leopard and also the common leopard. In one site, you have three types of leopard. That is in Nam Dhapa. Now, Nam Dhapa is also known for another very important one. You know, squirrel, evergreen forest. We have number of squirrel, flying squirrel. So there's a very unique type of squirrel found here. There's a flying squirrel. Nam Dhapa flying squirrel. It's a red color. It's a red color squirrel, right, which is a unique in its own kind of genus, which is found there. One bird which I will write here, Nam Dhapa is known for one particular bird, the Arunachal Pradesh, that is called as a white bellied, white bellied, right, that is a part of a um, heron. Is a migratory bird. White bird heron is a critically endangered bird. Now, what is making the news? See, Kamlang, again remember that. This is Nam Dhapa. This adjoining part is the Kamlang. Again, remember that this is in Arunachal Pradesh, Kamlang National Park. And it is again tiger. It is known for tiger. Kamlang. This is a nearby their part of. Kamlang is known for tiger. It is also now new tiger reserve of the state of Arunachal Pradesh. Plus, Kamlang is also known for elephants. You have elephant population also there. Tiger and elephant. Now, what is making headlines here? The headline is this three types of frogs. Right? Now, if you look at here, three frogs which have been found. Amphibian species, uh, India's hotspot. Now, when you know the hotspot concept, India has got four biodiversity hotspot, Himalaya, Indo-Burma, Western Ghats, and Sundaland. So it formed the part of Himalayan biodiversity hotspot. And Arunachal Pradesh again has another hotspot that is called Indo-Burma. It's a confluence of two hotspots, Himalaya and Indo-Burma. It is known for amphibians. Right? You can see here, given. Namdapa National Park is a tiger reserve of the country. Then again, the research which was done there, which have found the taxonomic part of it. This is what they, they have found there. The three type of here, this uh, frog have been found there. So that is where the this news was there, which I, I'm trying to just uh, bring about that, right, uh, where it was found in that context. Now moving on, the next one, the next news is this one. Another one here, millet. So you all from Kerala, you are aware of this. Adivasi or the tribes of the place called Attapadi. Attapadi in Kerala for millet. Right? You are aware of this. Millets have been an integral part of the Adivasi culture and lifestyle in the Western Ghats. Now Western Ghats highlands of this Attapadi Kerala. Now there's government support and with that area, millet farming has started. So you know international year of millet and this millet has been given the importance. So please make sure to read about millets, whatever comes into that. So here in terms of, uh, and you know millet can be grown in the, even the less part of it, like you know, millet farming, Atapadi reason, millet uh, can be grown in less water, doesn't use more water. Even the part of this can be grown there and that can again provide the nutrient to the people there. Now coming to this one. 
village in a village sanctuary was there thing here a village sanctuary in assam a village sanctuary in assam protects wildlife and preserve tradition now you see the bird here and you can figure out which bird is this is hornbill like in kerala you know malabar hornbill then you know pied malabar pied hornbill hornbill is also found in northeastern state let's look at what is covered here is given here that's a in terms of a, this a chala village chala village of assam's charai dev district charai dev district in assam this a, lush evergreen forest and is also known for buddhism there is a cultural sites are there that means a sacred forest is there right uh, during my class there in sikh ias i have already discussed about this uh, sacred forest concept charai dev that is a district in assam and which is known for this particular sacred forest and is linked with buddhism there is a part of the buddhism kind of thing and is known for evergreen forest sometimes you know in news or current affairs sometimes uh, such kind of a place or news which comes there you should be aware of that so here the village people they have conserved this particular uh, type of species of hornbill in the assam that part of there which comes here chala area there now i am coming to another news a very important news this one clouded leopard you can see here clouded leopard right as a species becomes very very important and you will find clouded leopard in eastern himalayas there is a part of the arunachal pradesh in that belt clouded leopard comes so one of the important area of question could be on the clouded leopard now if you see here this one this uh, what is given here let me read out here clouded leopards are distinct from other cat species so they belong to big cat leopards come into big cat so other lap, this first their visually striking coat pattern they have cloud like you know cloud like features coat pattern large spots are there their biggest teeth related to their skull right if you look at what is second thing they have a biggest teeth related to their skull size among all cat species that means if you look at all cat species and the skull and the teeth clouded leopard has got bigger teeth than the skull based on that and they are small in size they are not very big in size there one is the fur the cloudy appearance on the skin of the leopard clouded leopard another teeth third is that clouded leopards have excess arboreal abilities see you know now you know that you can see in the question paper they are asking the questions in such a manner where about the animal you should be aware of the animal aspect what is third aspect of clouded leopard that uh, they are arboreal what is arboreal the live on trees arboreal means living on trees they live or stay most of their time on trees they are arboreal this is what comes here and then again they can climb very fast among the small cat they can climb very very fast right now very important one has given here one is arunachal pradesh where you find this clouded leopard another very important thing comes here assam manas see here i'm just highlighting the point here hide and seek in spaces they share with stronger larger competitors finds a study from manas tiger reserve and national park in northeastern state most of time people think manas for one horned rhinoceros greater one horned rhinoceros tiger elephant these are there manas is a park which is also part of the heritage site unesco world heritage site manas sir, is a part of the manas river which is a part of tributary of brahmaputra river very few people will be aware that manas also host clouded leopard that clouded leopard is found in the manas national park where the a team of scientists did the study right so this is what i am trying to bring here so manas national park they have found there this particular clouded leopard there right so a carnivorous animal there now let's go to this one another one here recently again another thing which has come in the news in gujarat let me first show you this uh, particular plant 
Just see this plant here. Gujarat has recently banned this particular exotic canocarpus tree. So one is that whatever comes in the newspaper, but I'm trying to cover from Monga Bay, There's another site where, where the inverted news comes. Gujarat government has banned this particular tree. It's exotic varieties. This is what is called here, Conocarpus tree. Now what is see here, this one. This is said that this tree here, forest department, Conocarpus tree species, and non-forest areas such as nurseries and plantation, and their harm to environment and human health. And it's basically a species of uh, Africa. It's not Indian, there's a, it's an alien species, exotic species brought from Africa to India. And this now the government of Gujarat has ban banned this particular tree. So you can see here where initially introduced in India as ornamental trees, like horticulture. But now Conocarpus lancifolius, and one of the two species within the Conocarpus genus, indigenous tree there. There was Somali, Somalia, Djibouti, Yemen, found in the Horn of Africa. Now, because of this uh, toxic nature and again causing the problem to the environment, the Gujarat government has decided to ban the use of this particular invasive species. Now, this name you have to remember that. See, ecology environment, you have number of facts which you have to remember that, right? That part you have to be always be aware of that. This is another news which I found uh, that I have covered here. Now coming to this one, COP28, Conference of Parties 28th, UAE, Climate Change Summit. See, one of the aspects which has come into this one, global warming climate change, the $300 million given for loss and damage fund. Right? So if you look at from COP28 point of view, now, COP28 becomes important for the exam. Climate Change Summit in terms of UNFCCC and the Paris Agreement. Now, what do you have to be aware here? You have to be aware of all the key highlights, major outcomes. And I'm sure those students of CIS in the classroom, I have already given you the highlights from that. But those who have joined from outside CIS, right, those who are uh, not the classroom students of CIS. So very briefly, I'll just highlight there. And at the same time, what you can do from current affairs materials, whatever the current affairs material you have got, where COP28 100% will be covered. I'm very sure that COP28 Climate Change Summit is a part of all types of current affairs materials. So here, few things which I would like to highlight here. One is this one, loss and damage. Loss and damage fund that is to be given to the most vulnerable, right? most vulnerable countries of the world, which are at high risk of the climate change impacts sea level rise or extreme weather event or all, all those impacts there on agriculture, livelihood. So they are being now supported through 300 million US dollar fund grant. Sharmal Sheikh, COP27, there was a proposal of the fund. Now the fund is getting the money, finance. So this is the one very important. Second thing which comes here, global stock take. That is a review of a nationally determined contribution. All the governments under Paris Agreement, whatever the commitment they have submitted to the UN, that how much they are going to cut down the carbon emission, how they are going to do the carbon accounting, and what all type of initiatives they have taken in the domestic level to reduce the carbon. For that, uh, there will be a periodic review. And that is going to be in the next phase. Now, 2024, 2025 will be the first, the review or stock take of this global emission, carbon accounting and the global stage there. That becomes very important. Then again, 
नॉन फॉसिल फ्यूल एनर्जी के हैं सर पर्टिकुलर हियर रिन्यूएबल पावर सोलर एंड विंड एंड ऑल दिस पर्टिकुलर सोलर हैज बीन गिवन लॉट्स ऑफ इंपोर्टेंस देयर क्लीन टेक्नोलॉजी हैज बीन गिवन लॉट ऑफ इंपोर्टेंस देयर देन अनदर थिंग व्हिच वाज हाइलाइटेड दैट इज फ्रॉम मीथेन एड्रेसिंग द मीथेन एमिशन दैट वी शिफ्ट फ्रॉम सो वन इज द कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड one emission we are talking about fossil fuel carbon dioxide emission but now another thing is this one and again uh, in terms of here what is called adaptation separately the adaptation and mitigation how do we reduce the impact of climate change and adaptation measures again there will be the fund and all this one and you know if you remember those students who are right now uh, attending this session seek ias I have given you notes on that. Ki what type of alliances have been formed? What type of initiatives have been taken in the COP twenty eight? So these are the some of the things which are there in the news, and you need to at least read it with that one. And again, don't forget to practice questions from test series. They become very very important, right? That you have to be again be aware of that. So certain areas which have been given. cop 28 you should be aware of that so this is what i have mentioned here so again you can see 28th conference of parties under united nation framework convention on climate change and there it is given that loss and damage there so uae placed 300 million dollars fund uae and germany placed 100 million dollars fund then followed by 50.5 million dollar from uk 10 million dollar from japan in the loss and damage fund So then again, you see your world's America, USA, which is the largest uh, emitter of greenhouse gas carbon emission, has placed for seventeen point five million dollars. Three hundred million dollars from the UAE, that is given. But other countries are also contributing to the fund, and you can see your World Bank. Another thing here, this loss and damage fund. Remember that this loss and damage fund will be managed by the World Bank. all this money which the governments are pledging for loss and damage right uh, will be maintained and managed by the world bank this is given here so world bank will have this one part of the world bank has not so developing countries they will be having deal to compromise in terms of that so what is very important according to some estimate the funding for loss and damage will reach around 400 billion dollars that means this sir uh, 300 Million dollars this uh, by UAE and other countries. This is going to become four hundred billion US dollar. If you take all those industrialized countries, developed countries, it is estimated whatever their pledges are there for helping the countries which are at high risk, vulnerable countries for climate change impacts. That money will go up to four hundred billion dollars. loss and damage fund so that is one of the very important thing which is highlighted right uh, this much comes into the part of it here by 2030 that fund will be there right so that is one part which i have mentioned here now another thing here this for food another thing about cop 28 was the food right 500 million farmer 76% total emission that is coming from agriculture so here this food part of it so the declaration of sustainable agriculture resilient food system climate action was promoted by cop 28 ue what is very important this one cop 28 has come out with this platform there the declaration kindly note it down please note it down this one declaration on sustainable agriculture resilient food systems and climate action so this particular declaration in the cop 28 particularly to address the agriculture sector and the food security this platform was launched in the uae you can see here what is given here that uh, declaration on sustainable agriculture food resilient food system climate action was promoted there that is what called dubai food declaration dubai food declaration 
What is their aim? Scale up the food and farm organization there. 160 million hectares, right, uh, will be for regenerative farming by 2030. You know, the Paris Agreement has a target year, 2030, 2030. So there, that will go into that. And uh, farming by 2030, accompanied by 2.2 billion dollars in future investment will be there, which is going to benefit uh, 3.6 million farmers worldwide will get benefited because of this particular fund which will make the agriculture climate smart, climate proof agriculture, supporting the farmers. Because now you know the drought, famine and all those kind of conditions, flood that is impacting the agriculture worldwide. So there this particular declaration, Dubai declaration or this particular platform will try to assist farmers to meet such kind of contingencies. That's what comes here. This is what 2.2 billion dollars is another landmark, uh, uh, you can say, outcome of the COP28. See, whatever COP28 outcomes are there, you have to go through it thoroughly. You have to do it properly. Direct or indirect, you will get questions. Right? Direct or indirect, you will be getting questions there. Right? Clear there? So this is what I can see there, okay. Okay, I can see something here uh, on the, uh, I have a computer screen right now here. Okay, uh, some chat box has started, just once again. Uh, let me see here. Somebody has uh, used some kind of software there. Are you all comfortable here? What I'm trying to cover, I'm looking at your chat box there. Okay. I'm looking at your chat box right now. Uh, don't worry, you'll get the PDF there. I'll be sharing with the PDF. Uh, I'll talk to Shana. Uh, Shana, uh, shall I give the PDF right now to you? Shana, are you there? Okay. So don't worry. See, whatever I'm covering here, you'll get it there. It's just a matter of one and a half hours. You'll be able to get all the documents there. So I don't know if Shana is there or not. The recorded class, uh, you'll be getting that. The Yesterday's recorded class is there in the CKIS. When you go to seek IS uh, YouTube channel, already the recorded video is there. Okay, anyway, um, Shana has not responded. See, yesterday's video is already there in the channel there. If you go to seek IS uh, um, YouTube channel, there's already the video has been there. Even this video will also be recorded and given to you. So let us move into that. So this is very, very important. Uh, you have to know the development part of it. Right, COP28, uh, climate change part of it here. So now this is part which I mentioned here. Now let's go to the next part of it here. Another one here. Delhi pollution. Smog. You know that every year Delhi, every year Delhi suffer with the this NCRism about the smog. Smog has a problem every year. We uh, NCRism suffer with the smog there. Toxic smog there. And for that, uh, you know that, so whatever the areas comes there, see one, one part is a stubble burning by farmers there, that is a one story. But there are other reasons, one is the inclement weather, the bad weather condition, then the, you know, vehicular pollution, all these are there. So what do you have to do from air pollution point of view, go through this kind of topic here, right, uh, NCR pollution there. This is what urban emission which comes here, this part comes here. Now see here, apart from transport, cooking, lighting, heating contribute to 15 to 20 percent of Delhi's annual PM 2.5, particular matter, 2.5 concentration. Dust and emission from industry contribute 10 to 20 percent. So what is another thing here? See, when you're talking about pollution here,
and particularly the metro city is done. You know that number of cities in India are highly polluted. So now I'll just angle, I'll put across here. In the air pollution part, what do you need to know? Firstly, this one. There's a program of the government of India. Already in the mains exam, this question has been asked. National Clean Air Program. NCAP. Where targets have been given. The targets to reduce PM 2.5, particular matter 2.5, to non-attainment cities. What are non-attainment cities? Non-attainment cities are those cities, right, there are, now they have been revised. It has become more than 140 such non-attainment cities are there, which have not met the guidelines of a National Ambient Air Quality Monitoring Program, which is according to WHO. So that is here, non-attainment cities of the country, which the CPCB, Central Pollution Control Board. So these are those which are not met minimum standard, right? Minimum standard of a national ambient air quality monitoring program. Right? National ambient air quality monitoring program. And this is, you know that national ambient air quality monitoring program, this program is as per WHO guideline. WHO's air quality guideline. Now recently the WHO has revised this guideline there. It comes into that guideline there. And those cities of India or urban area which have not met that minimum standards, ozone, particulate matter 2.5, 10, NOx, right, sulfur dioxide, all this one, they are called non attainment cities. So they have been given the target to reduce it by 30 to 40 percent. Now another thing is this one, smog. So you should be knowing about the concept regarding smog. Photochemical smog and the winter smog, that part comes into that. Another, this one is rising problem. Particulate matter, particularly here, you know, PM 1, PM 2.5, PM 10. Now what is happening here? Now the nano nanoparticles are another aspect they're coming, getting to that. Another thing about air pollution, which you need to know, this one, smog tower. I mentioned in the classroom there, in Delhi, smog tower. Right, smog towers have been now set up there. And in this one, Kanad place has got the smog towers. China has got such kind of smog towers, but now Delhi is now getting this kind of a devices which can filter the air. Apart from that, there's another uh, very important instrument called Vayu. Wind augmentation in terms of that. There's a Nagpur based organization called Niri has brought this particular device called Vayu. Again that, then again you know that Delhi air pollution when you look at here, that is what called is a GRAP, Greater Response Action Plan. Right, based on the weather quality, weather data and the air quality, there are four zones, red, orange, green, and yellow, yellow and green, graded response action plan. And the list of activities which are controlled under GRAP. So anything with respect to Delhi air pollution, whatever comes in the current affairs, you should be going through that. You will get simple question in the exam. The question will be simpler. It will not be difficult, right? So I'm just trying to highlight there. There you'll get the simple question there, right? So this is the Delhi air pollution part I have come across there. Now coming to this one. Now very, very important one. E-DNA. DNA. I don't know how many people know this. E-DNA. It was in the news that for, in terms of scientific study there, right? They are now having this E-DNA. This uh, particular one, which is the making the news. EDNA, this is UK, United Kingdom. So what is EDNA? It is basically called environmental DNA. You know what is DNA? The molecular level, 
deoxy ribonucleic acid the nucleic acid there now there is a method from molecular biology from biotechnology what has now made that was in there in the news edna where the samples from the environment soil water air where the you know uh, part of the sample which may contain anything from wild animals or plant species can be studied for this dna so let us go to the article here if you look at this article this one jdsi see what is the news here india gears to use e dna to identify track wildlife let me first give you the highlight of the article then i'll bring to that so geological survey of india we have a scientific autonomous organization called jdsi that is going to use e dna method in order dna method so for that uh, to study a monitor wildlife here so they have got in order dna to study a monitor wildlife correct then you can see can aid researchers in quantifying wildlife flora and fauna and even explore elusive species even through the sample maybe some species which has not been seen see something which we observe and we know these are the frog or reptile or bird but sometimes there may be small type of organisms which may be elusive in nature which is not seen with naked eyes maybe microorganism maybe some other even the organism worm insect butterfly so through that sample we will be able to find out to what type of that species is there in that particular environment right this is what comes in edna so here study by scientists from the united kingdom has started the air quality network called collect that air quality network collect in order dna with the potential to measure biodiversity at continental levels on a scale and that this samples have surprisingly stable dna that is the best possible method to ascertain terrestrial biodiversity so they have started a pilot study J jdsi has started to identify and collect particulate matter present in the air so what is very important here this in order dna let me just bring the main point here samples right from air right can be analyzed to detect and also monitor wildlife now what is very important here these are the stable dna that means sir these are dna which are not fragmented and they will do the sequencing that something called your biotechnology method dna sequencing to identify a species right and particularly here this is a part of the terrestrial biodiversity this is a study they are doing for terrestrial biodiversity here now this is where where the word comes metagenomics there's a part of the biotechnology called metagenomics already upsc has asked this question metagenomics what is metagenomics scientists the sample from the environment they will sequence in the lab and then they will compare with already database there will be other database already there so this whatever has been sequenced they will be matched with the database and then they will try to identify whether it's the same similar or different species there even this e dna can also help it can also support in controlling wildlife in controlling this illegal wildlife trade wildlife crimes those samples which can be identified and that will really help the the kind of a law enforcement agencies to nab such kind of a poachers or look into those kind of a seized samples whether rhinoceros tiger elephant whatever comes in that's where the e dna method comes now why it was in the news 
because of JSI, Geological Survey of India has started a pilot study in India to have this eDNA. So we are going to create a database of such eDNA, involved DNA. And this has been done already in UK. United Kingdom already has a project on eDNA. But now India will go into that. Right? And JSI is an autonomous scientific organization under Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. That will come into that. So this becomes another important topic linked with biotechnology part of it, which you have to be aware of it. This is what I've mentioned here, right? So this is where you have to be going through that. So now I'll move to the next topic here. This I found a very interesting thing here, okay, how the wildlife trade can be worked on that. Now coming to this one, down to earth. Down to earth magazine, another source of environment question in the exam. Now particularly, I'm, this is the link with geography, Al Nino. Al Nino impact, rising temperature in Al Nino, right? Ocean warming, Pacific, and then the cause of the drought, right? In the part of it. Now you see here, down to earth magazine at peak value of 2 degrees Celsius above average sea level, sea surface temperature, 2023-24 Al Nino, among the strongest on the record. 2023 Al Nino, right, uh, this one, and 2024 Al Nino is considered to be the strongest on the record. And another factor which is causing that record high temperature, that is the warming, global warming. So Down to Earth magazine has covered this. Now here, climate phenomena to keep temperature above normal and 2023 Al Nino phenomena is experienced globally is one of the five remember that i'll bring here what the saying is one of the five strongest on record the world meteorological organization has started has stated you know the un body wmo world meteorological organization has stated that 2023-24 al nino is the one of the strongest among five five such al nino strong al nino recorded in the past out of that, 2023-24 also comes. And that is going to have impact on the monsoon, the rain season, the cloud formation, precipitation part. And then again, it peaked in the December. If you look at this, what is said here, if this 2023-24 uh, Al Nino, right, uh, it has started in the month of December and is weakening gradually there, global climate there. Right? So June 2023, see here, which developed in June 2023, Al Nino effect was the strongest between November and January. Right? Where the temperature of ocean water, that mean temperature went up there. And particularly it was a eastern and central tropical ocean, Pacific Ocean. Right? So Al Nino impact, that was in the news. So again, Geography, environment and geography. The topics of geography connected with environment. You have to be again going through that because even the geography questions are now being asked from environment perspective. So that you need to be aware of. So this is what I have given here. This is one of the things which you come across there. I only know part of it that was in the news there, right? I'll take your doubts there, but let me just cover the topics here. The so Down to Earth magazine has another one here. This one, forest fire, you know, wildfire and the forest fire, particularly the Himalayan range is now getting affected because of forest fire. If you take here, in terms of the data which is here, there is now frequent forest fire right, in Himalayan range. The Down to Earth magazine is now being there. Now, what is the being the magazine is saying that that three western there's a forest fires in the three western Himalayan states. Particularly, you know that this one, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, 
and then you know this J and K and Ladakh region. Right? Where the maximum, this uh, a part of the uh, is happening there. And the fact sheet, if you look at here, if you look at the fact sheet here, so this is what is coming here. So there's a, the area which is getting the affected there with the fire there. Right? More frequent forest fires has been found and particularly you know that um, you know um, conifers, coniferous trees, sharp needle and all which get in summer, these leaves get dried up. And they they at high temperature caught the fire and that then again it has a they also secrete oil and all which are sometimes flammable substance. So that can again the fire uh, increases in the forest. Right? That goes further into that. So forest fire again linking with climate change part from the inward project, like wherever forest fire, biodiversity will be at loss. So that part you have to be aware of. You have, you have to cover from that area there. Right? That part you have to be going to that one. Now coming to another area, which is uh, I have found that uh, this is now Munga Bay, if you, this one. Ginger prawn fish. What I found a very important thing here, ginger, prawn, fish, little run of kutch in Gujarat. Run of kutch in Gujarat, little run of kutch in Gujarat, that is where LRK, two nature based livelihood system is there. Ginger, prawn, fishing. And second is salt production because that have the salt pan, salt deposit is there. Now, very unique thing is there, ginger, this uh, uh, part of which is uh, they do there. And the salt, there is something called agarias, which carry out the salt making in that area. A run of kutch, little run of kutch. Another one called ginger prawn. You can see here, uh, they prepare this one. What you can see in the photograph here. The lady which is uh, making that. Prawn, you know, shrimp and prawn. And then a ginger prawn, a small one, they, they are into that. So they, they have uh, converted their uh, prawn fisheries there. That was the part of it. Now moving on, next one, down to earth again. Great Barrier Reef. Continuous bleaching, coral bleaching of Great Barrier Reef in Australia. Now what the down to earth magazine has covered? Down to earth magazine is saying that Great Barrier Reef, right, bleaching is the fifth in the eight summers. Eight summers, Right, again the Great Barrier Reef, coral bleaching. You know what is coral bleaching? You all know the coral that has a, is a marine animal which has a symbiotic algae, Jujantali. And because of ocean warming, one of the reasons. Other reasons are acidification, other part. What is happening there? This Jujantali which come out of the polyp, resulting into the bleaching of the coral, colorless corals. And again, coral death, mortality. And if corals get bleached, it has a drastic impact on the marine food web. So again, now Down to Earth magazine has reported five times this coral bleaching in the Great Barrier Reef, which is UNESCO World Heritage Site, and the biggest reef on the world that has got impacted them. So this again is the news from climate change perspective, global warming climate change perspective. That is where the comes into that. See, I have got some 50, 50 plus articles. So I'm just trying to give you brief uh, information there. The so coral reef, you have to read about coral reef from whatever angle, geography angle, then water angle, coral reefs become very important. Then you have to read from the sources there. That's what you have to cover there. So this is what the coral reef in terms of has happened there. Now let me go to the next part of it here. Google. See, sometimes in the news you may have facts. Google. And you know that why, why I brought this one? The reason behind it. What I have found in the last five years question paper, they are asking at least one type of plant. Right? One type of plant which in some way in the news, UPC is asking question on that. Now what you can see in the photograph here, Google. 
one google you know right one google you know another is google is the name of the medicinal plant is a type of a medicinal plant right so let's let's look at here google there a repository of medicinal goodness now see what is given here iucn right it is a threatened one is a native plant species in gujarat kutch it will highlight there where this google is found google this one is a native plant species in the state of gujarat kutch region run of kutch which also you know is a marine biosphere reserve this particular native found in that area now if you look at here it is used as antiseptic treating bone fractures bone fracture and antiseptic properties this particular plant has got which i have shown the photograph there then what is given here another one here oleo gum resin you know resin and gum oleo gum resin tapped from the stem is stem this google plant stem has got oleo gum resin which has industrial application that is a to produce used to produce even ayurvedic drug that which has a high demand why google has come in the news because of the demand of this plant particularly this one gum the gum resin which is used in the ayurvedic formulation they are highly demanded there and you can see here highly in demand systematic over and it is a critically endangered plant by iucn according to iucn read it a book this google is a critically endangered what do you mean by critically endangered more than 90% the decline of this particular plant species that means sir native to gujarat more than 90% this uh, plant has been lost over the last 10 years and since there are high demand in medicinal because of medicinal properties there there now effort has been under work go to save that conserve there now the government has started conservation of this particular plant so i found this particular in the news i thought let to share that if you come across this name be prepared so at least you will be able to solve the question right yes uh, somebody has given also there it also used in uh, uh, hava havan and puja yes pratiksha has given that answer it is also used in the part of the worship in part of their that also comes into that right that also comes into that that's right that's where this comes into that so here i have just added here this particular one which i mentioned here this uh, uh, part of this they and here again the, they have done the study here medicine plant and all now i am coming to another article here see i have got so many articles here so let me discuss that hangul another important news which has come about hangul now anybody right now can tell me what is what is hangul you can see the photograph also there hangul <laughs> what is hangul anybody in the class is called kashmiri stag is basically here kashmiri stag it belongs to red deer very important one and is a critically endangered is a critically endangered animal of india kashmiri stag and found in kashmir kashmir valley part of some jammu and then also some part of himachal pradesh now look at what is the news has come the news is saying hangul population in kashmir could go extinct without intervention what is the article has come ki now based on the assessment of population of hangul if the conservation is not properly done then hangul may become extinct in kashmir valley now i'll ask a question which is the national park where hangul conservation is done in india what is the name of the national park yes very good the chigam yes 
Great, very good. Varsha has given the answer. The Chikam National Park. So here, this is the news there. Hangula species, critically endangered. There's a population census has been done. See here. I'll read out the sentence. What is given here? 19 year counting has been done. For almost 20 years, two decades, counting of Hangul has been done. Is also state animal of Jammu and Kashmir. So if you look at here, 19 years study of the Hangul population in Kashmir, the Chigam, has revealed that ongoing protection effort that is not that much. And you know, the Chigam, the, the most important name comes this one. The Chigam National Park. Now, risk of extinction here, Hangul. What is scientific name? Servus Hangulu species or Hangulu is a critically endangered species of India. Right? And they have found that uh, that conservation is not that much here. So that was in the news. That was in the news here. Right? It came in the news of that one. So let me come across here. So one is this part which has come in the news. I'm highlighting that part. Now the Himalayan wolf. Another very important species in the news is Indian Himalayan wolf. That is now declining. What do you see the photograph here? The unique uh, wolf ready. Now what is given here? Himalayan, Himalayan wolf is in need of concerted conservation effort. That is what is required the conservation effort now. Now what is mentioned here? That IUCN report, Himalayan wolf lineage, since from 1840 has been overlooked by science and conservation there. And they are adapted to stay in the high altitude ecosystem. Particularly, you know, Himalaya and Tibet plateau, they are found there. So now the several threats are there, prey, hunting, and part of they are found in Ladakh also there. The high altitude, the part of it, there you will find here. See, they are found where? If you look at their habitat, see, I always remember that when you are coming across, you have to always be knowing from the habitat point of view. Now, what is the, here? What is the news? Recently, there is an IUCN report. Now, IUCN report has noted that only around 2275 to 3792 individuals of Himalayan wolf are left in the wild. And they are the part of India, that is one is Indian Himalaya, Nepal, and the part of Tibet. Tibetan plateau there. Now, if you look at another very interesting thing here, India, see, this is the above the worldwide population. If you look at India part, India has got 227 to 378. And where do you find this Himalayan wolf? They are found in high altitude part of it. More than 3000 meters above mean sea level, this wolf is found. Now here, distributed in upper Himalayan region. And you know that there is one name which you are all aware, Cold Desert. Cold Desert Biosphere Reserve. Lahol Spiti. And going towards Ladakh, you will find this Himalayan wolf from the Spiti, Lahol Spiti in Himachal Pradesh, northern part and going towards Ladakh side. Cold Desert Biosphere Reserve. So here, they are distributed in the Lahol Spiti. Lahol and Spiti, Himachal Pradesh, Ladakh. And also in Eastern Himalaya, Sikkim, Uttarakhand also, and possibly in Arunachal Pradesh. That means if you look at Himalayan range, Spiti, Lahol, Himachal Pradesh, Ladakh, then Sikkim, right? Then coming to the part of the Maybe some remnant population of Arunachal Pradesh, this Himalayan wolf will be found, and then Uttarakhand. Now, what is very important? There is a captive breeding program of Himalayan wolf in Darjeeling. This Himalayan wolf. There is a captive breeding program. There is a place called Padmaja Naidu. Padmaja Naidu, Himalayan 
जूलॉजिकल पार्क हिमालयन जूलॉजिकल पार्क इन दार्जिलिंग दार्जिलिंग डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ वेस्ट बंगाल राइट दार्जिलिंग डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ वेस्ट बंगाल वट एवरी दर्ज कैप्टिव ब्रीडिंग सेंटर फॉर द हिमालयन वुल्फ इन पदमजा नायडू हिमालयन जूलॉजिकल पार्क इन दार्जिलिंग डिस्ट्रिक्ट सी वन पार्ट इज दिस वन कोल्ड डेजर्ट दैट इज द पार्ट ऑफ द हिमाचल प्रदेश एंड लद्दाख अनदर वन इज द ईस्टर्न हिमालय दैट इज वेयर सिक्किम कम्स सिक्किम एंड नॉर्थ बंगाल कम्स दार्जिलिंग दिज अ ब्रीडिंग प्रोग्राम सेम पार्क सेम पार्क पदमजा नायडू इज ऑल्सो नोन फॉर another very important animal called red panda red panda and again there is successful captive breeding program of red panda even scientists are doing snow leopard breeding program plus this also comes here right all right so again whatever comes here i'll just uh, see all of you so shimi is there parvina is there ankita is there so there are people who have right now so i am very very happy that you all are interacting here varsha has given already the answer there all right so there are many people are there i am really happy to see you all okay yes uh, akshay don't worry yesterday's important topic pdf was not shared in the telegram that will be done there don't worry you will be getting that there is nothing to worry about it see i am just trying to like in two hours class i am just trying to bring maximum number of topics to the session there so that if any thing some comes from there so you are able to you know uh, be aware of that that's what i'm trying to just uh, bring about that so just uh, this part be prepared with this himalayan wolf there right this comes into that so again the endangered comes into wildlife institute of india has gone into that and free ranging dogs and all can be threat there now look at here another very important one bullock gibbon bullock gibbon only ape found in india bullock gibbon now bullock gibbon here only ape species in india now there is a sanctuary i'm just highlighting here there is in assam there is a place called holon gapar gibbon sanctuary kindly note this name holon gapar gibbon sanctuary in assam for holon gibbon there is a ape on india holon gapar gibbon sanctuary is there in assam there is a primate monkey and 125 individuals are there and the primate mariani and dibrugarh railway line there that is a part of dibru saikhova see there is a Biosphere reserve called Dibru Saikhova, Dibru Gard and Tinsukia district of uh, Assam. So even Assam has population of bullock gibbon, is endangered animal there. Is a endangered animal there. At the same time, bullock gibbon, right? Bullock gibbon, you will also find in the Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland, that type of landscape there. habitat loss poaching these all of the threats to hulog gibbon and is a very very important species and you could get question in the exam hulog gibbon species from the biodiversity perspective there so recently this name you remember that holong gapar sanctuary gibbon sanctuary in assam you know sometimes such kind of news where you have such kind of fact right that becomes very very important for the exam Which you have come across there. So here they have they have done this. Uh, this a uh, Dibru Gard. Remember that. This one Dibru Gard in Sukhya district. There this particular one comes into that. Right. Currently a uh, part of this where the threat has come into that. So they are uh, found in the arboreal. They are in the forest area and the part of there. Now coming to another very important one. This also I have covered in the classroom there. If you remember that horseshoe crab. another very important one which is which has made headline horseshoe crab now let's understand about horseshoe crab uh, although it is a crab crab is called crustacean crab is called crustacean but uh, this looks like a 
spider, spider or something kind of thing, right? Now horseshoe crab is trapped from sea and ocean for its blood. It has got, got blue blood and which is used for testing medicine. And they are called living fossil, correct? They are called longest living fossil, this particular crab there. Now this particular crab is under threat. So one of the expected question could be about a horseshoe crab, right? Odisha, West Bengal, Tamil Nadu, wherever these are found, even western side, Kerala and Maharashtra part, now see here. Horseshoe crab declines sparks, urgent conservation plea for conservation part of it. And particularly it's a demand for pharma industry, right? They have been highly threatened. So if you see here, the blood of horseshoe crab, see here, what is used here? This one. The blood, which is blue in color, of horseshoe crabs can clot in the presence of bacteria. It clot. Just like our blood, when it comes to blood clotting is there. So this blue blood of horseshoe crab can clot in the presence of bacteria. So the bacteria is there, rendering the bacteria harmless. Bacteria, that part present bacteria, this clotting ability has been extensively utilized in testing injectable medicines, vaccines and sterile medical equipment. So this is the important one, where the horseshoe crab find application in pharma industry for testing of medicine, vaccine, this blue blood of the, the horseshoe crab that is used there. So rendering the bacteria harmless. So this clotting ability, what is very important, this one. See, you can get this question. This could be a important question in the exam. Sometimes you can get indirect question that. Like this, uh, given there, clotting ability of an animal, a species, find application of pharma industry, and you get a question there, right? So here, this, uh, this clotting ability of this blue blood of crab, they are used for testing for medicine, vaccine, sterile medical equipment. And recently it was used in the development of COVID-19 vaccine. During the Corona time, it was recently it was used during the development of COVID-19 vaccine. Right? This particular horseshoe crab was used. And beyond their blood, the outer layer of horseshoe crabs consists of chitin, another very important thing here. See, one is that this one, another. The outermost part, if you see this, this one, is outer, uh, this uh, shell, that is made of chitinous matter, chitinous matter, is a tough and elastic, which enhances wound healing. What is the rule of this, this chitin there? It is used for enhanced wound healing. It has a medicinal properties. For that, horseshoe crab has an application. So this article, I found it very important for the exam. That's what I picked up here, right? So if in case question comes in the exam, you are aware of that, right here. And this world's horseshoe crab population has decreased there. It is called living fossil, you right? It's the very oldest uh, organism in terms of evolution. From evolution perspective, is the oldest uh, species comes here, crab, horseshoe crab. And then now IUCN is saying that the number has declined very fast of this particular horseshoe crab, right? So this is where you have to be again aware of it, what you see right now. Right, so it's used for the coastal development. And in India, if you look at in India, another very important thing, in India, horseshoe crab was included Schedule 4. You know, Wildlife Protection Act, we have Wildlife Protection Act earlier, you know, now the amendment has been made to Wildlife Protection Act, but you know the Wildlife Protection Act, six schedules, schedule one to five on animals and six on plants. Sixth one is on plants, one to five on animals. The, the earlier six schedule there, but now amendment has making rationalization of the schedules there. So schedule four, see here, schedule four of the Wildlife Protection Act. And this was done in 2009. This means that catching and killing horseshoe crab is an offense. See, schedule one and two have 
got highest level of protection and punishment highest level of punishment there three and four also are endangered species but they have lesser punishment two years imprisonment fine of 10000 rupees minimum fine 10000 that comes there so even you have to connect with the indian laws also there okay, how the horseshoe crab comes into that so this is a very very important topic from the exam point of view right so isko acche se padh ke jana you have to read this thing properly there so let me let me move into that i have got so many topics to discuss so let me come into that now look at here hyena striped hyena another very important topic for the exam is a striped hyena <laughs> you know this movie lion king right in lion king i will come across this animal there now this is now declined striped hyena is on decline right and they are scavengers see they are carnivores they can hunt but again they are scavengers lakda bagha in hindi it's called lakda bagha right so they they scavenge the dead animals they eat that and you know this makes a very unique type of sound like something like a you know a giggling kind of sound <laughs> that kind of sound is there it make that kind of giggling kind of sound laughing kind of sound is there right so here what do you find here carcass now what is the news here what came in the news let me come across here senji banjai and eid from the lion king right in the lion king movie remember that even you know upsc can ask you this also there see upsc is very very smart right can pick up the name of the character from the lion king movie and can ask what type of animals are there one way of asking question this popular movie lion king and then this name and can ask there see here you have this name senji senji banjai eid ed these are these three striped hyenas in the movie right they are portrayed as evil in the movie they are considered evil and menacing but this carnivorous animal hyenas right are essential role in ecosystem hyenas play very important role in ecosystem although in movies they are depicted as a villain even you know jungle book jungle book mogli sher khan has their hyena also that hyena keep on telling sher khan ki where the mogli is there in the jungle in the forest it is always in those kind of story and all portrayed as a bad character right but from ecological perspective they are very very important animal they clean our environment carcass dead bodies they clean our environment hyenas there here you can see the important role there a new study which has been found now look at here i'll now write striped hyenas what is scientific study done striped hyenas sawai mansing wildlife sanctuary in rajasthan what is the name of the sanctuary sawai mansing wildlife sanctuary in rajasthan a team of scientists conducted study on striped hyena so here 23 tons of livestock carcass dead animals and 17 tons of wild prey every year were eaten by hyenas this is a 19 to, to the 1920 there and that has saved lot of money of the municipalities see if we don't have scavengers in the nature like vulture vulture is scavenger if we don't have scavenger then all those dead bodies and carcass we have to spend money to dispose them but hyenas can finish it off so we don't have to spend money there what has been done there prey cremation and prey burning there striped hyena see what type of climate they live now another thing here 
striped hyenas they live in the dry areas arid and semi arid see here if you look at it's a, a distribution habitat so they are found in arid and semi arid climate they don't require too much of water semi arid and arid climate then again they are found in east africa eastern part of africa to south asia see sometimes uh, biology of the animal you have to be aware of that right from east africa you know horn of africa eastern africa to the south asia hyena is found geographically now what is very important here they spot a dog like uh, appearance you see here this animal dog like appearance that and their sai remember that they are sai and solitary they avoid human presence they basically avoid human presence sai nature nature and the part of the solitary there they they rarely kill see they rarely kill or hunt livestock although they are carnivorous right they they are basically opportunistic on remains of animals see what a hyena does when a bigger animal like tiger or lion hunt and eat the animal so whatever the leftover part there this uh, hyena comes and feed on that so they are opportunistic feeder they are carnivorous they do the hunting on the cattle but they're not often rare they are opportunistic feeder that means when a bigger animal bigger carnivores like tiger or lion or something do the hunting and eat there the remaining part of the animal they come and feed it they what is the hyena comes into that right yes uh, leo movie also yes very true very good <laughs> very good leo movie yes yes very true in the leo movie there is a hyena you know him initial part of that and then that part of it, that is shown in the movie there yes very good very good that is really that is a part of that yes and uh, yes uh, what is given here i am seeing your chat box there yes subamai subamai yes subamai there is a part of it yes very good is very true there so leopard or tiger whatever they even they eat in that so now striped hyena hyena this numbers have got down they have stripe on the body they are now getting down there so now let us come to the next one now look at here indian desert cat another very important one about the cat here indian desert cat right is a then again you see there are soft sandy gray spotted pelt and dark bands are there right and they are under scheduled one of the indian wildlife protection act and again appendix 2 of sites desert cat see even the small cat could be the question in the exam and particularly you know sites cits what is sites convention on international trade of endangered species right uh, which is international convention to look into sample of wildlife being traded internationally there it is appendix 2 that means some part of the body or of this animal desert cat can be traded in the international market some part that government can do but it is a schedule 1 what is schedule 1 they have got complete protection under the law hunting and poaching is not allowed right this is what comes here and also their uh, asiatic wild cat they remain in this kind of kazakhstan pakistan western india western china mongolia now their number is declining there they are now getting the number declining there there is small cats will come across there i have just brought there now coming to down to earth magazine down to earth magazine cms convention on migratory species cop 14 what is cop conference of parties conference of parties cop 14 right of cms bond convention on the migratory species that was organized you can see here 
this uh, action plan for African Eurasian migratory land birds. Remember that if in the current affairs, you are reading this one. One action plan has been for African and Eurasian migratory land birds. Recently, there was a conference of parties or summit of CMS, a Convention on Migratory Species, where India is also a party with that. And the government adopted for Africa and Eurasia land bird, terrestrial bird, there is a declaration part of it, action plan, which was then brought there. So now here, India and Bangladesh submitted joint proposal to list, but now I'm writing here, Indian schema. Indian schema India and Bangladesh had submitted this land bird Indian schema to be added under CMS Convention of Mighty Species so what is very important this bird Indian schema and here you will find 14th meeting there that was African Eurasian part and that was in Samarkand this is a 14th, 14th meeting that is a of a CMS was in Samarkand. And you know Samarkand has some historical linkage with India. That is in Uzbekistan. So who will tell me what is the historical link with the Samarkand? <laughs> what is the historical link with Samarkand? Samarkand in Uzbekistan. It has India's historical and cultural link. What is that? I'm looking at this one. Uh, Lal Badu Sastri died there, okay. All right. Shanghai Cooperation Organization, SCO. Okay. Uzbekistan. All right. There's one more thing is there. Medieval times. Babar, Babar. Mughal, Mughal rule, right? Samarkand is linked with Babur, right? Who established the Mughal rule in India, right? At the same time, Shanghai Cooperation Organization and all this part is Chinggis Khan, yes, very true. Chinggis Khan is also linked with that, yes, very true. Mughal rule, yes, very true. Same place, now you remember Samarkand? So 14th meeting of parties of CMS was there in Samarkand. And then this uh, listing of this Indian schema that was there in the news. Another fact which I'm adding here could be important for the exam, right? There you could get the question there. So I'm very happy that you know about this. So this uh, has been done there. So this becomes really very, very important here. So this is what I've mentioned here. And adoption, this is schema, right? AMLAP, Action for African Eurasian Minority Land Birds. This is what was adopted by the parties there. 12 year multi species there. And this is a schema. What do you see the photograph here? Right? India schema. Now coming to this one, next one here. Now from Mongabe, Prosopis Juliflora. Now what is the, in the news here? In Gujarat, let me add here. In Gujarat, there is a Jesor. Right, there is a Jesor sloth bear sanctuary in Gujarat. Right. Now, what they have done, they have this is a semi arid area. The Jasur is a semi arid area, Gujarat, which is known for this black bear, sloth bear. Right here, you have a sloth bear. So, a team of scientists conducted a study of this one. Impact of a, one, you are aware of this. Prosopis juliflora, which is a invasive alien species. Prosopis juliflora, 
is a invasive alien plant so what they did a study how this growth of the plant impact sloth bear in this part called jessore there now what is important from upsc point of view is that this sloth bear sanctuary the name of the sanctuary and then already you know that upsc in the previous year question if you go to pyq previous year question already upsc is asked about prosopis juliflora that invasive alien species exotic plant already question has come what is very important to remember is the jessore jessore sanctuary for sloth bear in gujarat that you have to keep in mind so this is what i have highlighted here right that part you have to be aware of that so that they have seen that uh, how that uh, affect in that area there bear population so one fact which you have to keep in the mind here this is what is has come into that so please uh, make sure that you are able to go through this they they studied this one sloth bear and this part of it they did the study here now coming to another one which i'll just down to earth magazine here katha katha is a type of uh, nutrient which is used in cuisine like your food it just almost have the lemon kind of thing there so that was uh, there uh, i found that is one of the species there and now come to this one han patan there is about a gaddi gaddi people and their land there so what i found here this name khanjar is the place in miar valley of the part of what you see this people there you know gaddi g a d d i gaddi gaddi is a nomadic kind of tribe they go with the herd of animals there so in himachal pradesh right you will find this himachal pradesh this gaddi part of here so they they have a land and this part of it there so it is basically what is very important this one what i found this particular one there is a name than patan that is a part of lahol and spiti where right is this place in himachal pradesh lahol and spiti so i found that in the kind of ecological part of it than patan this what i have highlighted here so that is a where the livestock and the kind of a coexistence that was uh, found there than patan this come there now coming to leopard leopard cat what are other species the leopard cat right leopard cat you can see the leopard cat she is not a leopard <laughs> right is basically a cat which look like leopard and they live in the wet climate they require water moisture so if you look at this uh, wet climate part of it here so they are, they are basically see here adaptation of the broad habitat tropical rain forest right from tropical rain forest this animal what comes here right from tropical rain forest right evergreen forest temperate forest coniferous even the grassland and shrub that in this particular cat is adapted to live in various type of environment right from evergreen forest temperate deciduous conifer alpine shrub forest grassland there so there was a analysis what is given scientists carried out the mitochondrial dna analysis of this leopard cat there was a biotechnological study see all you know mitochondria also contain dna so the scientists did the mitochondrial dna in terms of study of the species of this leopard cat that was studied here and also they compared this they are found in western ghats also there so what they found that through the mitochondrial dna of desert cat in different habitat or different ecosystems they are genetically different they are not the same so they did the analysis through such kind of dna from mitochondria of the animal and they tried to compare the north indian with the south indian and they found the distinct type of dna is there again the from the part of ecology and the biotechnology part was done 
so they found the distinct population there right and they they were uh, right from the last glacial age 20000 years ago from there it has been surviving this uh, animal has been there now coming to this one down to earth magazine we have now 14000 uh, leopards now what is very important there is a government of india ministry of environment forest and climate change there has been study of the census census of leopard leopard study has been done and in this case uh, mp maharashtra karnataka and tamil nadu have the highest number of leopards in india so this is basically is from leopard census Fourteen thousand leopards are found in India. Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Karnataka, and Tamil Nadu are the top four states with number of leopards. Right? So India has got this one: thirteen thousand eight seventy-four leopards. According to the census of leopard, these number of leopards are there, and Madhya Pradesh has got largest number. MP is highest, having the largest number, third largest ferret in the country. There. This recently. the report came in this one 29th february 2024 pan india this population was estimated and this was the report has come right. mp then maharashtra karnataka and tamil nadu so this uh, i am sharing the data here leopard could be one part which you have to just go through it right then coming to this one another one here lion localizer what is in the news this one lion localizer if you get this question direct question sometimes in upsc prelims exam you get direct question lion localizer is a web tool is basically website based tool that basically trace wildlife parts of their source population what is lion localizer it is basically a web tool by which uh, whichever animal and its body parts we want to trace we can trace it now developed by university of illinois urbana can that use a dna testing see here they use the tool of dna testing to pinpoint the geographical source of contraband lion parts now this could be important for the exam you know hunting and poaching of lion in africa and all this one and the parts of the lion which is traded or illegal way it goes there contraband parts of the lion that can be traced with the help of dna dna of the lion and there the web tool has been developed by university of illinois which can trace such kind of thing there this is what is called lion localizer is a basically a dna based tool from the biotechnology point of view and a valuable resource for combating lion poaching for controlling lion poaching they have been they have developed that so if you get a direct question like you know um, earlier in the upsc prelims exam earlier in the upsc prelims exam this question was asked monitoring of tiger that was in the news monitoring of tiger in the tiger reserve there is a application called m stripes where the forest department or wildlife can trace the tigers there now on the same line for lion this uh, lion localizer has been developed so that i have found uh, another very important useful information where question can be asked there right which i have mentioned here right uh, very true that's what uh, comes here so i have i have given there right so here this is what comes here what do you find here right this is what comes in this part of it all right so here you have to just go into that one to control the illegal trade of lion and the lion parts this line localizer is there let's look at here if you look at here line localizer 
So you'll find here in terms of that. So let me just again go to some more topics here. Line localizer. This one. Line tracker. Okay. You'll find here line localizer. This is the one. In USA, they have done this. By the support of American people there. So you have this, uh, the web page there. So there they have developed this line localizer. This is about the lion population worldwide. And again, you see, they are using mitochondrial DNA. For identification, they use the mitochondrial DNA. Right? This uh, cytochrome B, mitochondrial DNA they have used there. Correct. So this is what I have just uh, shown you there. This is what has they have brought there. Right? So it's a web tool for illegal line parts. The, 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 in America, they have developed there. Now coming to the next one here. Microplastic. In mangroves. What the research study has found? That microplastics in mangroves. Now the plastic pollution has risk to the mangroves, mangrove forest there. Mangrove, you know, the plants and all things are there. There is an, so what is given here, a scientific study was done, microplastic fibers, less than a millimeter, were found in the coastal Karnataka, mangrove forest in coastal Karnataka. Where this study has come? In the coastal Karnataka, in the mangrove forest, there, southwestern India, microplastic has been found there, in the mangroves there. And you know that mangroves, uh, India is the home of mangroves there. So there the microplastic has come, pollution part. Then again you come across here, another one here. Very interesting thing which I found about millipede. Now what is very interesting about millipede is that they add nutrient to, to the soil. They are soil enhancer. Just like you know earthworm. And they are basically detritivores. They come into detritivores. What is detritivores? These are those type of organisms which feed dead matters. Like earthworm. And they add nutrient to the soil. Now, there was a research study about millipede that uh, from evolutionary perspective, there are 450 million years ago, right? And uh, what is very important, they help in soil formation and the nutrient cycling. So, scientists which have studied their millipedes, they help in soil formation and part of their. So, here, they are basically um, kind of uh, detritivores. wars. And they play a very important role in soil, nutrients, and in terms of decomposing the organic matter. This is what they have uh, gone into that. Uh, made of. Now coming to this one. Frog. Night frog. Another news which has come, that is night frog. Genetic insight can enhance Camphole night frog conservation. Any idea where is Camphole? <laughs> So here, Campole part is given here. Any idea who can tell me this night frog, which is found in the night time, they are active in the night time, and this Campole, this name is given, is a very, very important because uh, that area where this night frog is found, this amphibian, is also important from another angle, that is a tiger, right? So here, if you look at genetic insight here, that is in terms of uh, Again, the part of Western Ghats. Right where? Western Ghats. Camphole night frog is found in the Western Ghats. It favors freshwater habitat. And they are found in this one. This is part of the area which you find. There is a river basin. They are found east flowing. Tunga, Kaveri and Kabini. Karnataka. 
Tunga, Kaviri, Kavini, the, the river basin there. There this night frog is found. And again the Kali, Sharavati, in the state of Karnataka. This uh, frog, Campole night frog, found in the part of Karnataka's part of Western Ghats. And then this found in the Tunga, Kaviri, Kavini, Kali and Sarabati. Now, Kali, you know, Kali, this one. There's a place called Dandeli. Dandeli in Karnataka. And it's also now Tiger Reserve. It's also known for Tiger Reserve. Dandeli Tiger Reserve. Right? Yes. Uh, and so Kerala and Karnataka, yes, very true. Yes, uh, Sujit has given the answer. Jitendra uh, has also given the answer. It's also part of the Kerala also there, yes. Tunga and Kaviri and this part of Dandeli. See, Dandeli comes in the part of Karnataka. But again, you can see here, Kavini and all this one. Moyar, Kavini. Kali is a part of Dandeli. Saravati is a part of Karnataka. This night, uh, Kempole, the name the place given there. So I found that this is another part which I found to share with all of you, this one. And Kerala and this part of, they have done the study of this. Now coming to another article here. This one, very, very important. Small clawed otter, uracil otter, smooth coated otter, otter. See, uh, I have found in the Hindu paper, Indian Express, so many times the otters have come in the news. Right? India is a home of different type of otters. They are mammals. They live around wetlands, rivers and wetlands. They feed on the fish. So if you look at in Indian part of it, there's a out of the list is a kind of animal. There are 13 types of otters. If you look at there are 13 types of 13 otter species of the world. Of which three of them. Asian small clawed otter. There are 13 otters worldwide. Three of them are in India. Small clawed otter, then Eurasian otter, Lutra Lutra. And then smooth coated otter, which are found in India. Right? And it has come in the news. Several times in the news, you will come across this otter as we mentioned. And in our Ramsar site, wetlands of international importance, these animals are few of the Ramsar site, they are found as a mammal there. And you know that is found in northeastern India along with the Western Ghats. Even Jammu and Kashmir, recently, Eurasian otter has been sighted in Indus River. Jhelum, Chinab, Eurasian otter in Jammu and Kashmir. After a long time, this otter was sighted in Jammu and Kashmir. That again becomes very important from the exam point of view. So again, the otter species, you have to be reading about the otter species. They are carnivorous. Right, they are carnivorous mammal, right, and they are found throughout the country there. Right, Kameng River, see here, in northeastern India, Kameng River. If you come across this here, see here, Kameng River. That is in Arunachal Pradesh, Pakhe Tiger Reserve. Right, otters are under research across India, the first otter survey. First time otter survey in northeast India was conducted in Pake Tiger Reserve. That is a part of Arunachal Pradesh. See here. The first otter survey in Northeast India was conducted along with the Kaming River, Pake Tiger Reserve, only in 19, 2019 there. There, because habitat loss, pollution of wetlands and rivers, even they're hunted for meat, skin, so their numbers have declined. Right? Even prey population, they feed on fish. They, they feed on fish. Even the declining prey population that is given there. Right? That is ancestral fishing and all this one. So if the fish is less, they will be also dying. Right? So they are found there and uh, I have already gone into that area. Now let us come to the assisted hunting. Right? Madhya Pradesh, Palamu Tiger Reserve. See, in Jharkhand, there is a place called Palamu. And Palamu Tiger Reserve, what was in the news in there? The government is helping to have assisted hunting. Those animals which are not very much 
you know, adapt to hunt. They are assisted by forest department to do hunting. And in that contest, Palamu in Jharkhand, which is a tiger reserve, came in the news. That part comes into that. You can, you can see Palamu, remember that. Palamu Tiger Reserve and then also Bhagwan Birsa Biological Park. Oromanji, Ranchi, Ranchi there. In Ranchi, there is a gown, there is a village called Oromanji. Bhagwan Birsa Biological Park is there. There, this assisted hunting has been done. And the central zoo is there. Black buck, barking deer, samba deer, nilgai. This has been brought from there. National Tiger Conservation Authority that they are helping that part. Now coming to this one, clouded leopard, I have already mentioned that. Another very important thing, this one. Palm tree. See, palm tree was in the news. Right? Palm tree was in the news. Right? Palm tree was in the news for one reason, that is uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the lightning one, Odisha government See, Odisha is one state which uh, frequently they get affected by lightning. So palm tree, you know, palm tree has a trunk, the stem, and then you have a, all those kind of uh, the leaves there, palm tree. So what is very important, the palm tree can be one of the effect by which the lightning, when the lightning from the sky comes, that can be, the palm tree can absorb and ground it. So the people will not die because of lightning strike in terms of disaster management. So Odisha government is promoting cultivation or growing of palm trees in those areas where the frequent lightnings are there. That was in the news there, right? That was in the news. I'm just trying to bring into that. That is where the, the news has come. Right? So let me just uh, come into that. Almost we are getting to the last part of here, right? So let me just uh, go into that. Microplastic I've already covered, right? Uh, so let me just uh, go into some of the areas. So lightning strikes for that Odisha government is cultivating uh, this palm trees there. That was in the news. Right, this uh, assisted hunting plumu I've already mentioned this one. Can palm trees mitigate the impact of lightning strikes? Right? So that becomes important there. So there, this uh, Odisha State Man uh, Disaster Management Authority, they're promoting for that. So that is what, is what what was in the news there. Now coming to this one, glacier at Pangong. You know, recently, see one of the area which you can expect this year question, that is a glacier lake outflow. You know that, Sikkim. There's a part of South Lonak Lake where the, the glacial lake outburst was there and the flash flood was there. It was asked in the mains exam, right? Now you could get question in the prelims exam about glacial lakes. Even their wetland also, the Ramsar site also there. Plus a glacial lake outflow. Now one news which has come, Pangong Lake. You know this Pangong Lake that is in Ladakh. This is what you see the lake here. And it's a transboundary, India and China. Line of actual control, LSE, divide Pangong Lake. One side is Ladakh, Leh Ladakh, Indian part. Second side, LSE across China comes. China part comes into. It's a beautiful lake here, Pangong Lake, Pangong So. So there, in terms of scientific study of the glacial lake outflow. Now this is because of flash flood and all. So you please prepare this topic of flash flood and the glacial lake outflow. Right, that is very, very important here. Another one, this one, Mizoram. In Mizoram, this one, what you see this uh, lizard is a parachute gecko. Gecko, you know gecko, G-E-C-K-O, gecko. In home, you have house gecko. Now, it's a very unique type of uh, found in Mizoram, where Mizoram is a parachute gecko. And it's just a 20 centimeter. 20 centimeter in size, this lizard, just like parachute, can come down. Now, it's a very rare, which has been found there in Mizoram, in Northeast India. This was found here. So, here, this one, uh, Myanmar. In Myanmar, also, they found gecko 
Lenotum, that is southern Mizoram, and also presents in the Myanmar. There's a parachute uh, gecko is there. Gecko Mizoram instances, that is what a uh, new species of parachute gecko recorded in Mizoram. That was in the news. So you can go through this document there. Then coming to this one, Jaldapada National Park. Now, Jaldapada National Park is in the West Bengal. See, Jaldapada, Baksa, Jaldapada, these are the part of uh, northern Bengal, north of Bengal. And Jaldapada National Park is also known for rhinoceros. See, you all know one on rhinoceros, Kajiranga, Manas and all. But Jaldapada also becomes into that. So here, this uh, Jaldapada National Park, West Bengal, right, uh, there's a, uh, they were poaching of rhinos there. So the villagers are fighting against poacher to preserve, conserve rhinos there. Right, so there's Jaldapada part of it. So Joint Forest Management Committee, which forest department, they are trying to conserve that. Then again, a very important thing, Rugra mushroom. Just see this, there's a mushroom. You know, mushroom belongs to fungus, the rugra mushroom. What you see here, there's a rugra, is a nutritious mushroom found in the state of Jharkhand. Rugra. Again, please remember this fact, rugra is a nutritious mushroom which is found in the state of Jharkhand. Now it's getting impacted because of climate change and deforestation. What you see right now here, this mushroom. So here, uh, also called puttu or putka. Rugra mushroom is also called puttu or putka. This is vegetarian mutton. It almost tastes like a mutton. This rugra mushroom almost tastes like a mutton. Puttu or this uh, called as a, a putka. Vegetarian mushroom. Where do you find in the state of Jharkhand? They are cultivated there. The income for the local people. But because of the changes in climatic pattern, the growth is being affected there. So decreasing forest area that's coming here. And they require high humidity. Rugra mushroom grows in high humidity area. Production decreases in the rain deficit years. So they require moisture, humidity. So for that rain, rain water is very, very important. So if there's a rain deficit, loss of water, that affects the growth of this mushroom. Right. So that is what the uh, given here. The moisture and all and also requires laterite soil. Remember that. Rugra grows in cluster in sandy laterite soil. In geography, you will read that the part of that uh, Chota Nagpur plateau, where, where Chota Nagpur plateau, Jharkhand, laterite soil. Right. So sandy laterite soil underneath the salt tree. Where where this uh, Rugra mushroom is grown? So this rugra mushroom, you will find in the part of the, this is what comes here, that is a, in terms of a, this a salt tree, right? Under the salt tree, they are found to grow, right? Rugra mushroom there. And the, they, they are now getting affected because of the change in the rainbow pattern, microclimate there. Right? So, now coming to Kerala, rusty spotted cat, Kerala National Park. Where do you find Kerala National Park? This rusty, of uh, this cat, right? The rusty cat is there. This is, which is the uh, found in that area. So here, Nepal, India, Sri Lanka, this cat is found. So that again, I have given here in this context here. So in Kerala, you know, Ghana National Park, Bharatpur, right, uh, Bharatpur part of it there. Now, can anyone guess here, what is this? Can anyone uh, find out what is the given here? See, Bharatpur has got rusty spotted cat. That is the Kerala Dev is in Bharatpur district of Rajasthan. And it is a Ramsar site of Rajasthan in India also. And they are known for... Uh, Siberian crane and all this which comes is also world heritage site. But now if you look at here, what you see here, this is a type of a species, right, which has been found, a very unique one which was found here, is, is a from snail or slug, Indrela. What is the name here? Indrela. 
Its name is Indrela. Right? Indrela. Now Indrela, Indrela is a semi slug. Right slug there. Now this is found in Western Ghat. Where do you find this is found in Western Ghats? Western Ghat of India, this particular a shell and the font is there. So that was in the news there, which you come across. So again, uh, is a slime kind of a mold there, where they're found there. Then I have, I have given this one, shark, shark fins. Another thing like Goa, Goa shark, shark fin that is eaten there. So again, what is happening the shark and the demand for shark fins in the seafood that is impacting the shark population. There you will find here, coastal belt and this one, shark, shark fin that was came in the news there. So Maharashtra, Goa, then uh, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, where it is all eaten there, that is what comes there. Now another thing here, this one, grassland, right, Arunachal Pradesh, Bengal Florican, what you see here, is a critically endangered bird. What you see right now is a critically endangered bird called Bengal Florican. Right? Now, it is a critically endangered found in Assam. Then you'll find it in Arunachal Pradesh. And uh, this is what the news has come in from Arunachal Pradesh here. That their Himalayan grassland, their number is declining there. Right? Uh, there was a, a found, their study was found that because of loss of the grassland, this uh, Bengal Florican, which is a critically endangered bird, that is getting lost here. So that is a place in called dying, dying earring, right? Uh, cleared in dying earring. That is a sanctuary area where the grassland is there. Siang district. What is come here? Siang district. If you see here, Bengal Florican, dying earring sanctuary. What is the name of the sanctuary here? This name of the sanctuary is this one. Dying earring sanctuary, Bengal Florican. That is Arunachal Pradesh. Right? It has a wetland, marshy areas, and the East Siang district. River Siang and East Siang district, Arunachal Pradesh. And where there's a habitat of critically endangered bird. What do you find here? Arunachal Pradesh, dying earring sanctuary there. So that was there, the grassland, and the study was done where the loss is there. So again, again, another very important area which has come grassland loss. So you should not be only thinking of some type of birds there. You should also go to small wild cats, <coughs> right? Small wild cats. <coughs> so what I've done here about small wild cat, like you know, sometimes you know caracal. What you see here, this is the called caracal, which is found in Madhya Pradesh. Even you'll find in Kuno, Kuno National Park, this caracal is there. It's a small wild cat which is found in India. You know, jungle cat, caracal, right? Fishing cat in Sundarban area, you'll find fishing cat. So India is also home of small wild cats. Right, a spotted rusty cat. So those kind of feline kind of cat species. Even you can get direct question in the exam. This is why it comes into that. So you have this uh, uh, part of it. Now again, what, what I would like to just add here. Uh, these are topics I have compiled here. Snake bites in India. Another thing is the snake bites. Many people die because of snake bites. Even the snakes, reptiles, that could be part of the question. Right? So if you see here, snake bites in India every year, roughly 58,000 people are bitten by snakes in India. 30% are non-venomous, others are venomous here. So there is a national program for prevention of and control of snake bites and a task force has been made by the government of India. So this you can go through it, the snake bites and the, which are the poisonous snakes in India. So that part I have compiled here. And then comes to this one, snow leopard. Recently you know that we have a census of snow leopard and now the number of snow leopards have been uh, found out. So snow leopard, Himalayan range, right? Hemis and most of the snow leopards are found in Ladakh. Where do you find most of them are in Ladakh? Snow leopard, if you look at, right? Uh, most of them are in Ladakh there. So according to the census, what has been done there, right? We have now 718 snow leopards in India. 
How many snow leopards are there in India? According to the recent census, 718. And out of that, highest population of snow leopards are in Ladakh. And there's one very famous national park called Hemis, Hemis National Park, which is known for snow leopard. And they prefer this rugged mountain, that kind of a environment they prefer there. Cold climate, rugged mountains. So again, snow leopard. And about that uh, national park, sanctuaries, conservation part, that you should be going through that. So that now they are being affected, snow leopard there. Then coming to olive ridley turtle, Gahir Mata and the uh, bycatch, there was uh, Odisha's beaches. Death of, uh, you know, death of uh, this olive ridley turtle. Sometimes uh, these turtles, you know, there is Gahir Mata marine sanctuary in Odisha, where the mass nesting, Aribada, of all the turtles are there. Another place is called Rushikulia. Now, what has happened here? There was a death of the turtles on the beaches because of the sometime bycatch by the fishermen, or they may be hit by the motorboat. They may be accidentally killed by the motorboat. That was there in the New Zealand, Puri district there. Somia Ranjan Biswal, he is a person who is known to save turtles. That was in the news there. Then coming to this one. Wild water buffalo. See, this animal is again important for the exam. Wild water buffalo you'll find in Kanha, Kanha National Park in Madhya Pradesh. Kanha is also tiger reserve. And we also find wild water buffalo in Assam, Brahmaputra River. Where do you find the habitat? Brahmaputra River. There we come across this uh, uh, central India and aid in restoration part. But also it is found in Assam also there. This wild uh, water buffalo that was in the news, right? And then coming to the last one, which I have given here, this one, wolf. Normal jungle wolf, human disturbance and all. Now they are affected there. This uh, human animal conflict is also happening with the wolf there. Now we don't come across the wolf there. Maharashtra, this study has come there, right? Wolf there, wolf population there. And that uh, Pune and Maharashtra, they have done the study there. Then last, yak. Yak. You know yak. Yak is a cattle which you find in Himachal Pradesh, Dharamshala and those areas. Yak is also found in Arunachal Pradesh. Then part of Himalayan range you find yak. And the milk of yak is used for making a lot of food products. <laughs> Food products are there. Like here, exclusive Brokpa. So there is an Arunachal Pradesh. I am talking about Arunachal Pradesh here, Eastern Himalaya. Yak milk products are exclusive to the Brokpa. Brokpa pastoralist herders. A yak rearing community of Himalayan region. And the nomadic yak relies on ecosystem awareness, part of it, traditional knowledge. And the Brokpas, there is a tribe here. Brokpa is a tribe. They are semi-sedentary life. And that go with the yak there. So Brokpa. What do you have to know? The name of the tribe, Brokpa. So what I've done here, 52 articles, 52 articles. Imagine, 52 articles in different areas I have got from Down to Earth magazine, Munga Bay, I prepared there. Now this document will be shared to you. Now last but not the list, let me do this one. Probable topics I have mentioned last class. Just give me five minute time. I have prepared 100 topics for coming prelims exam for environment, right? Now out of these 100 topics, which are prepared for the environment part, right? Uh, we are also trying to have gist of that. Many of such topics we have already covered in the classroom program. When I was in the CIS there, that time I have covered so many topics there. But this part comes in. Now see here. What is here? Tiger Reserves of India. Elephant Reserve. You have to go through. Mike. Monitoring of illegal killing of elephants under sites convention. And we have covered in the classroom also Mike sites. So please go through that. Then India's NDC. National Determined Contribution under Paris Agreement. Then life, lifestyle for environment, MISTI. Now MISTI is the program for mangrove conservation. Last year budget, this MISTI program was announced. 
देन पंच पंचामृत अगेन फ्रॉम क्लाइमेट चेंज परसपेक्टिव फेम प्रोग्राम फेम इज द फास्टर एडॉप्शन एंड मैन्युफैक्चरिंग ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक एंड हाइब्रिड व्हीकल टू प्रमोट इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स हाइब्रिड व्हीकल्स वी हैव अ फेम प्रोग्राम प्लीज गो इनटू दैट एनएपीसीसी मिशन नेशनल एक्शन प्लान ऑन क्लाइमेट चेंज अर्लियर एट मिशंस वेयर देयर नाउ थ्री मोर फोर मोर मिशंस वी हैव एडेड सोलर मिशन राइट ग्रीन इन ग्रीन इंडिया मिशन सस्टेनेबल हैबिटेट वाटर मिशन एग्रीकल्चर सस्टेनेबल एग्रीकल्चर हिमालयन इकोसिस्टम स्ट्रेटजिक नॉलेज ऑल दोस थिंग्स प्लीज गो थ्रू दैट देन कार्बन मार्केट गो टू द रिवाइज दोस कांसेप्ट ऑफ कार्बन मार्केट कार्बन क्रेडिट क्लीन डेवलपमेंट मैकेनिज्म जॉइंट इंप्लीमेंटेशन राइट देन कम सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट मैकेनिज्म अंडर द पेरिस एग्रीमेंट एसडीजी प्लीज गो थ्रू द टॉपिक्स ऑफ सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट गोल्स then stockholm plus 50 conference so you know you know the 5th june 1972 stockholm conference and then 2022 was the golden jubilee 50 years of stockholm so then highlight of the stockholm 50 then new biodiversity goals and it targets now it targets were till 2020 2011 2020 now that that is expired but now new post 2020 agenda for biodiversity goals that should invasive alien species in the news species in news i have already covered in the classroom snow leopard nilgiri tahar that i have covered in the classroom please go through it asiatic wild dog dhol that was in the news hulog gibbon project cheetah reintroduction of cheetah in india then important protected areas in news right then wildlife amendment act biodiversity amendment act community reserve and conservation reserve sites appendices the convention part the central flyway Like you know, Central Asia flyways, migratory birds which come to India, destination flyways again for tourism, again the migratory birds which come there. Then coming to this one, born, I have mentioned COP fourteen, Uzbekistan, Samarkand. So there's CMS part. Then migratory species in news. Which was the migratory species news? Then Eva, there is a African Eurasian water bird assessment, water bird, ducks, geese, water birds. So Afro, uh, Africa, and Eurasia. That now vulture conservation, save, saving vulture, South Asian vulture from extinction, right? South Asian vulture, save South Asian vulture from extinction. Diclofenac, diclofenac, and all this part of this vulture conservation. Raptor MOU under CMS. Raptor birds of prey, vulture, falcon, kite, eagle. All this comes into raptors. So we have a India has signed MOU, Memorandum of Understanding under CMS. Go through that Amur falcon. You know the capital of Amur falcon in India is Nagaland, Doyang village, Doyang reservoir. There's a reservoir called Doyang in Pangti, Pangti village in Nagaland. If you remember, those who are in the classroom, I have discussed that Pangti village in Nagaland where Amur falcon migrate for their part of it, and then Doyang reservoir, Saiga antelope, again under CMS, Central Asia. the nagoya protocol access and benefit sharing abs benefit sharing under cbd nagoya protocol katajana protocol nagoya kuala lumpur katajana protocol links with lmo living modified organism genetically modified organism and kuala lumpur nagoya kuala lumpur in terms of accountability liability for any harm caused because of lmo or gm food kyoto protocol climate change montreal protocol ozone layer and now you know amendment of montreal protocol to phase out hfc kigali agreement part of it then basel convention rotterdam convention stockholm brs basel transboundary movement hazardous waste stockholm chemical pesticide herbicide persistent organic pollutant rotterdam prior informed consent with respect to hazardous chemical transboundary movement of hazardous chemical then bamako convention bamako convention is a offshoot of basel convention Bamako is by African Union for Africa. Even it includes nuclear waste coming to African countries. Bamako. Then come in Mina Mata Convention, Mercury. Then Convention Long Range Transboundary Movement of Air Pollution for controlling air pollution there. Long Range Transboundary and there Gothenburg Protocol. It was asked in mains exam. Gothenburg Protocol under Long Range Transboundary Air Pollution deal with eutrophication. Acidification and ground level ozone, like you know, photochemical smog, 
photochemical smog, ground level ozone, bad ozone, comes to Gothenburg Protocol. London Convention, in terms of again pollution, atmospheric brown cloud, brown haze and the brown cloud. Then IC mode. IC mode is a organization which work for mountain. And again, mountain development, Himalayan biodiversity, snow leopard and all this, cryosphere, glacial lakes and GLF, glacial lake outflow, glacial lakes and cryosphere, Arctic Antarctica, Joshi Mutt land subsidence, you know, Joshi Mutt land was subsiding there, that news, black carbon, soot, unburned carbon, right, incomplete combustion. So black carbon, then recent amendment to solid waste, plastic waste, e-waste, hazardous waste, and biomedical waste management rule. Recently, 2021, government has amended all these rules, electronic waste, biomedical, solid waste, plastic. So you have to go through the older provision plus amendment, whatever new amendment is there. Then come in industrial accidents, lightning, and I've said now, Odisha is now, is uh, planting the palm trees to protect from lightning strikes, light pollution, the impact of that, nuclear accident, Fukushima disaster, and you know, recently the coolant water treated and discharged to Pacific, Fukushima, nuclear accident, then discharge of coolant from Fukushima, recent amendment to Water Pollution Act. Now this year only, Parliament has brought the amendment to Water Pollution Act. So those area, then Delhi smog pollution, smog tower, YU and Grab, National Clean Air Program, new WHO guideline on air pollution, water pollution, river wetland, national river consumption plan, groundwater pollution, thermal pollution, plastic and microplastic pollution, all this topic here, desertification, UNCCD, United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification and Desertification, Great Green Wall of Africa. I think those students of Sikh IAS, I have covered this Great Green Wall of Africa, right from east to west of Africa, entire African continent, the trees are being planted. More than 8,000 kilometers long. And India has also proposed to build from Sonipat in Haryana to Gujarat. The same kind of green wall. So here, great green wall of Africa and green wall of India. Current aspect in clean technology, clean energy, solar, wind, biomass, all this energy. PIB update on environment. Year end review of Ministry of Environment for Climate Change, 2023. Now, in the month of December, year-end review or one-year achievement of Minister of Environment Forest has come up with that. All those highlights, you have to be reading about that. Then Down to Earth magazine, important articles coverage. I have already covered this. Down to Earth magazine. Monga Bay, The Wire, The Print and Eco India website. So I have already covered in today's class point number 9900. So I have already prepared that Monga Bay, which today I have covered those articles down to earth, Monga Bay and all this, I have already done the last part of it. Right? So these are 100 probable topics with static part, theory part, plus link with current affairs, plus whatever I have covered. I know this is a rapid fire, unstoppable, <laughs> unstoppable, continuous, tuck, 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 continuously there. I have covered that. So you have only two hours time. See, environment is a very big subject. It's not possible in doing in two hours. So I have to speed up. I have to go fast. Right? So I'll share this document. And also today, whatever I have covered, that will be shared to you. Nothing to worry. Right? So anything you want to ask? Yes, my dear students, you have anything? I know that I have already exceeded time. Yes. Anything you want to ask? No? You all are tired? <laughs> I'm not tired. I'm still... I can teach you again. <laughs> right? So all are saying thank you. So I'm also very, very thankful to all of you and also the management of CKIS for having this kind of program. So it is very challenging, but don't worry. Just whatever I'm trying to bring here, just go with that. Right? Nothing to worry about it. So uh, I know that I have gone a bit fast, but uh, if you are able to manage it, right? And you know, the lot of things are there. If you are able to manage it, I'm very sure you will be able to solve 10, 12 questions in environment. If there are 15, 16 questions there, 
more than 80 percent 10 12 you will be able to solve <laughs> right so let me see your uh, comments here between a detritive bore and scavenger see okay right uh, see detritive bore i'll tell you detritive bores are those animals which uh, they are see scavengers are mostly we talking about bigger size animals detritive bores are like uh, fungi or some small organism Right, uh, the difference is that detritive bore, right, they break down and eat it, right. Uh, but when you say scavenger, like vulture, vulture scavenger, the vulture feed. See, vulture is also detritive bore. <laughs> vulture is also detritive bore. Vulture is also the scavenger. Scavengers are also detritive bores. It's just only the word. See, when you say detritive bore. It could be any dead matter. It could be any dead matter. But when you say scavenger, they are the dead animals. They feed on dead animals. That was scavenger. They are also detritive war. But when you say general detritive war, it means uh, they can feed dead plant, dead animal, dead organic matter. So they are called detritive wars. Like earthworm. Earthworm will feed on the plants. Millipede. On the plants and matter there. But when you use the word scavenger. So they eat the dead animal. The basic difference is that. Even scavenger is, is a type of detritive bore. Detritive bore is a bigger term. Anything dead matter. That is detritive bore. Out of that scavenger is that detritive bore. Which feed dead animals. They feed animals there. Alright. So hyena is a millipede context. Yes. That you have to know. Hyena is a scavenger. Millipede is also detritive bore. Right. Millipede is detritive bore. We will not say scavenger. See millipede is a detritive bore. They, whatever the plant and organic matter in the soil. They add on that. But when you say hyena. Hyena scavenger. That means they will eat dead animal. Flesh of dead animal. That is called scavenger. Vulture, scavenger. But when you say millipede, they will only have the dead plants and all this. Right? Okay. So anyway, uh, I have covered a lot of things here. Um, if there is no doubt, then uh, we can stop the class there. But see, you are, there are many students who have joined right now the live session and will be watching this video after getting the live session the recorded video, whatever the people are watching. Wherever you have done environment course, wherever you have done your general studies program, whichever academy, whichever coaching institute, whatever you have covered, please make sure that you revise the basic concepts and the current affairs. In Seek IAS, we had a long number of classes and discussion on that, so where we have covered. But others who are not from this Seek IAS, from some other academy, wherever you have covered, all over India, whichever cities and towns you have covered, so please, whatever coaching institute has given you notes, you read and revise and read on that. All right. So very much, uh, I am glad to, I know, interact with all of you and uh, uh, we will uh, be, right, glad to have your feedback, discussion, the points. You should always get back to the Seek IES and at the same time, tomorrow, we will be discussing science and technology. So don't miss out the next session on most probable topics of science and technology for prelims 2024. So please be there. I will meet you tomorrow at 7 p.m. for science and technology session. Be there. I hope this effort right, uh, really help you guide in the preparation part. All right. So thank you, everyone. I am very, very glad and see you in the next session. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, good night. We'll meet soon tomorrow there. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you. <laughs>